I got started in privacy back in the 1990s uh, when I was a graduate student at Washington University in St. Louis. I was doing work on electronic voting and um, became interested in a lot of other internet policy issues. And I went to the Computers Freedom and Privacy Conference and it was this amazing experience for me. And I learned about a lot of different uh, issues, including privacy issues. And I came back to my university and I said, we should have a course on computers and society. And they said, okay, and you can teach it. And in order to prepare to teach these, this course to undergraduates, I did a lot of reading and I learned a lot about privacy. And then after I graduated, I went to work for AT&T Labs. And in the first few weeks that I was there, I heard that there was a new um, web privacy standard that um, people were trying to, to get started with. And uh, somebody said, why don't you go to this meeting and see, see what this is all about and, and maybe help out with it. And so I went to this internet privacy working group meeting and was one of um, two engineers in the room. And all of these lawyers and policy folks uh, looked at us and said, can, can you build us a standard? And um, not knowing any better, I said, sure. And thought, well, this, this will be a fun project for a few weeks. And uh, I started working on it. It's what became the P3P project. And I ended up chairing the working group. And seven years later, we had a standard and I learned a lot about privacy. We've been looking at finding the best ways to communicate with people about privacy. So um, over a decade ago, we started looking at privacy policies and looking at how long they were and how much time it would take people to actually read those privacy policies. And we came up with some ridiculously large numbers and it was clear that the idea that you could get people to read privacy policies was, was just ridiculous. Uh, so we started looking at what could we do to simplify privacy policies and give people important information from privacy policies without having to read through pages and pages of legalese. So we developed something called a privacy nutrition label, which was a tabular format, standard format uh, for representing website privacy policies. And we did some user testing on that and iterated and came up with something that seemed you know, pretty usable. And now we're looking in an IoT world at a similar problem, uh, only in some ways it's worse. So it's already hard enough for people to read privacy policies on websites. But in an Internet of Things world, you walk into a room and there might be 20 smart light bulbs and smart thermostats and cameras. And it's, it's really implausible to think that someone would walk up to all the light bulbs and read the privacy policies on them. But all of these devices are collecting their data. And so we've been uh, developing prototypes of systems where these smart devices can broadcast their privacy policies in a format that can be automatically received and interpreted by your smartphone or your smartwatch. And your, your personal device can collect these policies, read them automatically, and let you know if there's something that you need to know about based on your personal privacy preferences. So these are some of the things that we're working on. Um, another project we're looking at is trying to understand how people think about privacy and what are, what are the things that are on their mind when people talk about privacy. So what we've done is we've started collecting drawings from people um, in response to the prompt, what does privacy mean to you? And at this point, we've collected over 350 drawings. And these come from old people, young people, children, adults. Uh, some of them come from privacy professionals, but most of them are from everyday people. And we've been going through them and examining them and uh, coding them to see what are the different types of concepts that come out in these drawings and what can they teach us about how people think about privacy.
So my colleagues and I started hearing from people in companies who were looking to hire privacy engineers. And they came to us and said, do you have any privacy students uh, that we might interview? And um, we, we had some students interested in privacy, but, but not that many. Um, and yet we had a number of courses here on privacy and privacy engineering. And we thought, well, it would be nice to put this all together into a coherent graduate program. And we looked around to see what other schools were doing in this area. And there wasn't very much. There are law schools that have uh, a concentration on privacy, um, but uh, among the schools that have uh, technology programs, computer science and engineering, there was really no sort of degree program that a student could take if they wanted to focus on privacy engineering. So uh, we decided to put together a program that would be specifically for technology students and would go into legal and policy issues, but also very deep on the privacy technology, privacy algorithms, um, and also teach them some interdisciplinary skills and, um, and teach them about usability and, um, and user testing and things like that as well. So we put together this um, three semester program, uh, including some practical experience with a capstone project uh, and, uh, and now we have uh, the Privacy Engineering Master's program uh, now in its fifth year at Carnegie Mellon. I think privacy is a great field for people to get started in. People often assume that in order to get into the privacy field, you need to be a lawyer or have a lot of policy expertise. Uh, but we're seeing increasingly that there is room for technologists and uh, privacy engineers are really uh, being sought after today. Uh, so this is a great field for that. Uh, I also think it's important to uh, keep in mind that this is an interdisciplinary field and that whether you are a lawyer or a technologist or something else, the, um, the work that you're doing actually impacts people, everyday people. And so it's important to think about how your laws or how your technology is going to impact people and to, to try to put yourself in, in their shoes and, and think about it. Um, I also think that it's important to keep learning, keep reading, uh, attend IAPP events, attend other types of seminars and workshops, and keep learning so that you stay up to date with the new laws and policies, but also new technologies that are going to have a big impact on privacy.